So good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Unity of Chautauqua. And um, we are in this beautiful sanctuary. And for all of those that are meeting us online this morning, I, I, if I could take a picture and show you, it's such a sacred experience being here. So would you join me in prayer? So we take a deep breath into this moment. And we allow those words to anchor that knowing that we are a tapestry. Those that are here in the sanctuary, those that are joining us today online, and all the different connections we make that are connections of the heart. And so we just sink into that one mind, one heart, one breath that reminds us of our oneness as we join together in our prayer, naming the God of our being, which has so many different facets as we grow in our understanding. And perhaps the greatest is that that facet of love that continues through the universe, healing, inviting, with great passion and mercy. So we pray, oh great love, thank you for living and loving in us and through us. May all that we do flow from our deep connection with you and all beings. Listen to our heart's longing for the healing of our world as we open to the infinite field of compassion, wisdom, justice, peace, and radiant well-being that is always available. And so from this place, we invite ourselves into your flow. We offer our prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen and amen. So I want to invite all of you this week to check out our website and many of you may already know, but Unity has a website called unity.org. It's really easy to remember. And Chautauqua has an easy one too, and it's chq.org. And so we became very inventive and we said, why don't we make ours unitychq.org? So there you will find everything that's going on. But I really want to invite you, especially if you're here physically at Chautauqua, this Monday through Friday mornings at 8 in the sanctuary, we're going to have a meditation led by our minister who I'm going to invite up in a moment. But there's a surprise part of it that they are musicians, both her and her friend that are here this week are musicians. And so they're gonna also be having live music as well as the daily word meditation. So I hope you'll take this time to make that connection and be here. And then on Wednesday night, we are going to have on Zoom only um, a class called, called um, Oh gosh, positive path for spiritual living. My mind just went blank. Positive path for spiritual living. And so you can find that on our website. Also on our website, you can sign up for emails. So you know what's going on for the next weeks. We run 10 Sundays in the summer and then once a month after that through the year. So we hope you will join us. Now I'd like to invite our minister of the week up. Um, this is Reverend Dr. Susie Shadle. And would you come up here for a moment? And I, I just want to say a little about her. I'm just going to brag about her. She has so many accomplishments. I really had to bring up my phone to look at the website because they go on and on and on. She, she is I'm really old. That's You're really old. 
Just call me Noah. <laughs> he called you Noah. Yeah. yeah, this is the funny thing is that she looks really, really young. And then I'm looking at this thing and she was in the corporate world for like 25 years, me too. And then in ministry, 20 years. But she is also what I would call the Pied Piper of ministry because her function is to, is to empower other people to be able to speak their truth through ministry. So she has taught 20 students and graduated them. And she is from the Centers of Spiritual Living originally, and now she's also doing Unity. So she has both intense metaphysical and a very large experience besides being a musician. So Susie, I wanted you to say a couple words before we start into this Sunday lesson about what they're gonna hear about on Wednesday ah, night. Okay. So on Wednesday evening, we're going to explore the evolving role of faith communities in a divided America. Uh, and so really explore some questions around uh, what are we as faith communities called to engage in in the public square, if at all, are we called to engage in the public square? Um, I, you'll have to listen in to find out what I think about all that. Um, but I, here's, a, here's a fun fact, one of the fun facts we'll take a look at, because I know sometimes as uh, faith communities, we get concerned about the separation of church and state. And as it turns out, um, the relationship between church and state is, is uh, clearly outlined in the First Amendment of the Constitution. And the language clearly says that the government is to stay out of the realm of religion. However, it does not have any language that says that religion and spirituality should not be involved in government. So we are set free to explore what is the evolutionary call for us to perhaps help heal the divide in America. So that's what we're gonna explore. So I bring you greetings from Unity of Sarasota where something good is always happening. And all I have to say to any of my folks listening, it better be happening right now. So. <laughs> They're not listening, they should be in church. So. <laughs> Ah, it's wonderful to be here. I really appreciate being here. This is my first time at Chautauqua and I've wanted to come for years. So what a great uh, blessing and honor to be asked to, to actually speak. So thank you, Barbara. Um, you know, as a, as a minister, I believe that my call is to do my own spiritual work, to do that inner work that shows up on the outside of my life. And it means to, to do my spiritual practices, to do that through spiritual practices. And that means meditation, affirmative prayer, visioning, catching God's vision, not my own agenda, but God's vision, study, worship, you know, all that, just about anything can be a spiritual practice. It all depends on how we approach it. And anything can become a spiritual practice, a connection with, a communion with Father, Mother, God, Spirit. So it all depends what we bring to it. And for me to do that inner spiritual work and to do that spiritual practice enables me to be of service, to educate, to uplift, to inspire. New York minister, Harry Emerson Fosdick said, I am called to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. And I've sort of taken that on as a, as a mantra as well, because I think that sometimes we need to be pushed out of our comfort zones. I also believe that my call is to tell the truth, the truth not only about the spiritual experience that we all aspire to, but also the truth about the human experience that we're all continuing to have as we aspire to that spiritual experience. And like so many others, so many of you included, I personally have recently been immersed in the depths of the human experience, the human condition, more so than I like to be. I, I kind of like to stay in the spiritual if I can. You know, if I didn't have to have a human experience, I probably would say, eh, I'll pass. But none of us get to do that. And I've noticed as I've thought back about uh, now going on 21 years of ministry, I can hardly believe that, that's amazing, um, that my ministry has been a crucible for me to embrace both the human and the spiritual experience. 
And shortly after I founded uh, uh, my ministry in a church in Seattle, 9-11 uh, happened. And I remember waking up that morning and seeing the news and I was like, wow, first I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then I, the, the, the thing came to me of, you know, how, how do I, using our principles, explain this to my congregation? How do we navigate through this challenge together? And immediately uh, that great uh, teaching, I love Lucy came to me. <laughs> and what I heard was Reverend Susie, you got a lot of splaining to do. And I thought, wow, yeah, I really have to know what to do with our spiritual principles to bring us back to center in the midst of this unbelievable tragedy. You know, how do we, how do we acknowledge and embrace both the human and the divine in us? And how do we use spiritual principles, not spiritual platitudes or spiritual bypass to maneuver through this challenge? And the answer was yes, we use spiritual principles. And so we went really back to basics in our congregation and really worked with those in terms of not only seeding them deeply within, but how do we express and live those principles? How do we lead the way in, in different ways of being together in this world? And now in 2020 and 2021, we've been confronted with this COVID pandemic. Now, I started at Unity of Sarasota doing safety protocols way back in January because, you know, it started in Seattle. I still have a lot of friends there and I was getting firsthand information and I could tell this was serious. This was not a, you know, quick thing. <clears throat> and so I started protocols and a lot of my congregation thought I was nuts. And then in March, we stopped doing in-person gatherings and not only did folks think I was nuts, but some were pretty angry at me but I had to do what I thought was safe and right for the greater good. And so that's what I did. And now I've got people thanking me for doing what I could to keep us safe. But during this pandemic, my immersion into the human experience, the human condition deepened even further, especially physically and emotionally because I caught a bad case of COVID and I was sick between mid-January or mid-December and mid-January. And one of my congregants said, wow, you worked so hard to keep us safe. And then you got sick. How weird is that? Well, the big irony was that I got sick at a Unity Ministers Conference or retreat, actually. And, and you know, I actually, somebody said to me, what made you think it was a good idea to go do that? And I said, well, it was unity ministers. I, you know, we're all being careful and we had protocols there. And truthfully, the final thing that made my decision was, like, hey, we're unity ministers. We're, we've got special dispensation. We're surrounded by a white light. And you know what we all learned? That unity ministers are also having a human experience. So, you know, there you have it. Um, but I, I got to tell you, the experience of COVID is no hoax, that's for sure. It's a profoundly real human experience. Physically debilitating, you know, high fever, everything ached, shortness of breath, delirious. I, you know, I was just really not even cognizant. But was, what was especially telling was that, that it was emotionally terrifying, absolutely terrifying. I had a birthday coming up in January. I'll tell you, there were times I wasn't sure I'd live to see it. It was scary. And then I started thinking about this little wee tiny virus. How could it be so powerful to do so much destruction and damage and be so scary, this little wee tiny virus. And that image of a wee tiny something made me think of something else that's tiny, a mustard seed, a mustard seed of faith. I thought, wow. And I began to see in my mind's eye the imagery of this little tiny mustard seed of faith. And I began to move from fear to faith. And that little tiny mustard seed faith was a light that began to overtake this tiny little COVID virus. And I began to get better. And I began to rise up from that experience of being flat out. And I felt a renewed sense of life and a renewed sense of ministry. But as I began to feel better, 
uh, thanks to my dear friend, Lisa, she kept me drinking fluids and, and eating something at least when, when I wasn't even really lucid, I wasn't even aware of it. But as I began to feel better and the fever broke and I became more lucid, I got to you know sit up and uh, turn on the TV. And I, I'm one of the few spiritual people that actually does pay a great deal of attention to the news because I consider negative headlines my prayer requests. So I pray for the light of the opposite of the negative headlines. And so the channel just you know, happened to be the news when it came on. And that happened to be on January 6th, January 6th. And I, I was shocked like many of you to see what I was seeing on the television as the Capitol was being attacked. And I, I felt this utter disbelief at what I was seeing. And I kept saying, what is this? Is, is this real? Is this really happening? What is this? I could, I could scarcely believe what my own eyes were showing me. And it really, at that moment, really wasn't about politics for me. It, it really wasn't a bit, you know, it doesn't matter about that. What, what came up for me was that this heightened sense of separation and disharmony and distrust and hate and anger. I thought, wow, that's, that's, it, it was just mind blowing. And I realized that as a minister, I would be out of integrity not to call that out, you know, to not be willing to fall into the platitude of, oh, it's all God and it's all good. You know, it was not good. It was not a good human experience. It was a horrible sight to see that kind of negative energy overtaking people to the degree that they felt that they could do the things that they did that day. And then it was followed by lots of us pointing fingers and, and pointing out blame. You know, and blame is that convenient thing that allows us to avoid our own responsibility or accountability in anything. It's kind of like the fall from Eden. We've got, you know, we've got lots of history of pointing blame. Garden of Eden, Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the snake. Truth be told, I still blame the snake. I don't, I'm not a snake fan. Sorry, snake. <laughs> Every time I see a snake, I think, mm, mm, sneaky. <laughs> but you know, the truth is, you know that old adage, when you point the finger of blame at someone else, three fingers are pointing back at us. And so we have to ask the question, where have we not owned the truth? Where have we not owned our own responsibility or our own denial or our own willingness to zip our lips and not say anything, to not step up and call things out? When have we practiced spiritual cor correctness and not called out lies and injustice and racism and economic and social and healthcare disparity? Where have we not stood up for the principles and the values that we hold dear? Where have we kept silent? Because silence is tacit permission. To go along, to get along, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay to not call out destructive behavior and offer something to substitute for that behavior. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that ministry, ministers and churches and spiritual communities are called to be the conscience of our nation. We're called to be the conscience of our nation and to call out these things when they are not right. Even now, we still get alerts, particularly for liberal churches, that there are possible attacks because of what we believe, because of what we stand for. And also, as King said, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. And so we must take a stand based on the principles and the values that we hold dear and that we teach. It's messy to lance a boil, but you must do it to get the poison out. And so we must let the poison out to heal America. And who better to do that than those of us who are in spiritual community with spiritual principles and values that we can share. And the basic principles of our teaching are so in alignment with the original values and principles that America was founded upon. It's, it's sort of a parallel path, if you will. Things like God is all there is and is good and active 
in everyone, everything, and everywhere, that we are all, cre all created in the likeness and image of God and endowed with God qualities, and that we create our life experience through what it is that we think and feel and believe, what is in our consciousness, and that our lives can be transformed through the power of creative, affirmative prayer. We can transform our lives. And here's the sticky one and the most important idea and principle of all, that we must live the truth of these principles to activate them in our lives. It's not enough to just know them, to read them. Otherwise, they're just words kind of floating around, not really doing anything. The truth is that we are interconnected in this oneness and unity that transcends and includes all the diversity that exists in life because we are one. In the midst of all of that diversity, we are one. Out of the one come many, and yet the many remain one. E pluribus unum. Reverend Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the Teaching of Science of Mind, said, behind all is a unity and through all is a diversity. Saturating all is a divinity. We are all individualized expressions of the one God. And we say at unity that we are creating a world that works for all. We say that. I question how much we're doing it. How much we are living these principles. You know, I did a talk not long ago where in the talk, I asked the question, if you were on trial for practicing the principles of unity, would there be enough evidence to convict you? It's a question to ask yourself, how thoroughly am I living these principles and sharing them by modeling what they are? At Unity of Sarasota, we, we not only say that we're creating a world that works for all, but that we are a beacon of light and love, opening minds and touching hearts and transforming lives. That is our vision and our mission. And along with that, it's based on the foundation of finding common ground, finding common ground in the midst of the diversity in which we live. And what that requires of us, it's a pretty big, pretty big requirement. It requires that we listen to each other. And that we listen to what is hard to listen to because we may disagree. That we most especially listen to what is hard to listen to because we may disagree. And that we listen to understand that disagreement, to understand that other point of view. And then we speak our own truth to be understood and to share and to perhaps come up with some sort of synthesis of the two. That we come up with a third way, a better way for all of us to be. And so I think we have to cultivate and nurture that diversity within the greater unity within which it's contained. The history of America is a story of increasing inclusion. And unfortunately, we're a bit stuck right now. We need to get unstuck. The Declaration of Independence reads, all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, all men used to be all white landowners, and gradually, ever so gradually, it began to include more. And all men must continue to include more and more and more and more to include all people because all lives matter. The world is waiting for us to be that beacon on the hill, to be the change we wish to see in the world. We are the ones. We are the ones. It's not them. It's not somebody we're waiting for. We are the ones right here and right now. And we're called to that great ideal of one world, one heart, one soul, e pluribus unum, from the one many, and yet the many remain one. We're called to see and to honor the divinity in each and all and to give up that them and us thinking, that them and us consciousness, to recognize and realize our oneness. We are one. To realize that God is all there is and that we are one with God. Therefore, we are one with one another, interconnected, whole. We weave a tapestry together. Our challenge 
is to tell and live the truth as though we actually believe it, as though we actually believe that is so. For some people, unfortunately, right now, that is a bridge too far over the spiritual Grand Canyon to believe in that oneness and that unity, that to believe, believe that each one of us is divine. So maybe we need to dial it back just a bit before we head for oneness and unity and united states. Perhaps we need to start by finding some common ground. See if we can find some common ground upon which we can build to that idea of oneness and unity and wholeness. To let go of defining ourselves and others based on how we look different. To be open to seek and find those commonalities within our differences. To respect the differences and weave the differences together in the tapestry of our diversity. A tapestry of one thread is pretty boring. A tapestry of diversity is magnificent. Just look around at some of the tapestries here on this campus. Move from differences and separation to interconnectedness and interdependence. And allow our inner light to transmute fear and anger into activism of faith. Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, all spiritual masters understood the universe has to be one undivided, integrated whole to exist at all. Our founding fathers knew a house divided against itself cannot stand. We are now called to find and stand together on common ground in an atmosphere of harmony, collaboration and inclusion in a shared commitment to our various multi-faith traditions, principles, practices, and values. That's a quote by that great philosopher near and dear to my heart, yours truly. <laughs> Sometimes I can't find the right quote, so I make one up. All of that being said, the desire to find common ground upon which we can build a foundation that leads us to the reality, the realization, the embracing of unity and oneness, that's our task. That's our call, I believe. And I invite you to join me in it. I want to share, um, as I come to a close, I want to share a prayer of benediction, the good word, the good word benediction, and use it as a springboard for us to move towards seeking common ground and harmony in the midst of differences and unrest. This is an affirmative Franciscan benediction, and it's based on an affirmative prayer by Reverend Anne Marie Acacio. And uh, Anne-Marie couldn't be here this year. And I said, well, you're going to be here anyway, because I'm taking you with me. And so she did this, and then I added a small piece of my own. May you be blessed with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may be able to live deep within your heart. May you be blessed with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May you be blessed with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may you be blessed with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world, that we are creating a world that works for all, that we are a beacon of light and love, opening minds and touching hearts and transforming lives so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. So I ask you to join me, join me in that pursuit of creating the common ground upon which we can build and realize the truth of our unity and our oneness and that we are one, we are one. So blessings on your journey of seeking common ground of e pluribus unum. And begin by transmuting anger and fear into faith in action and embracing the diversity that exists within our unity. And so it is, thank God within and all around us, amen. Well, thank you, Reverend Susie. Um, we have a, another connection in Florida. 
and uh, we were both at that same retreat. <laughs> but I lucked out. <laughs> so um, and it surprised us all. But I'm so glad you're here and with us. So this is um, our time of offering. And just remind you, and I want to say thank you to all the people that have gone to our website. We have a donate button there, and as well as on our emails. That's something we just did recently since we started having people online. So just lots of gratitude for that. And hope you'll be here for um, the meditation Monday at right in the sanctuary. Actually, Wednesday is going to be downstairs, but Monday through Friday, for the most part, we're going to be right here in the sacred space. So I hope you'll join us. And then again, on Zoom at our website, you can get all that information. And the other thing I really hope you'll do, that because I'm so inspired by the people we've had here this um, season, that you will go to our YouTube and send it to someone else that you love and care about um, makes a big, big difference. And slowly more and more people are touching our message. And just like Susie said about sending that light, that's one way that we can do it. Each of us is to friend other people and include them in this community because there are quite a few people right now that are having difficulty getting out. And this is their connection. Um, and I get to talk to them sometimes um, and they wanna be here but they're not. So um, you make it possible. So if you take your gift, and if you, like I only give once a year, I write one check. So I just imagine my gift is here, but I've divided it up into all the weeks of the year to um, our, our community. And I hold that with a divine intention that this is way beyond money, that it is energy, God energy. And that that energy spreads from us, it blesses the ministers that come here, but also the message that's going across our um, country, actually, and so many, many, many states are tuned in. So um, we're grateful. So we have an affirmation we say, and just hold this together. And it is divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful we are. And so let's say our unity, prayer of protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so it is. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. <laughs>